Hey guys, this is Matthias, and in this video I want to show you my four ESF loadouts. And uh, I want to start with what is commonly known as standard. And yeah, by standard we mean standard air to air. So now I'll be showing you this from my Vanu point of view or my Vanu character, but this easily translates into all three empires. So yeah, when people talk about standard, they basically mean what you see here. I use the default nose gun, which in this case is the Saron laser cannon. I have thermal optics, magazine size maxed out, and ammo capacity maxed out. And I never really change around with the upgrades when it comes to the default nose gun. So now I use the fire suppression, I use nanite auto repair, and the hover stability airframe. And rather than having an additional weapon, I use the external afterburner fuel tanks. Now the two deciding factors when it comes to maneuvering and handling of your ESFs is uh, the airframe that you choose and whether or not you uh, fly with the external afterburners or not. Uh, what you see right here, I'm using the afterburner in order to give myself some momentum upwards in order to dodge some of the incoming fire here. The tricky thing is, of course, to be able to maintain your aim on your target, knowing whether or not you can put your aim directly on target or if you have to lead. This comes with time experience and you have to practice quite a lot in order to master this. Now when it comes to the other two options for airframes, the most common airframe among experienced pilots is the Razor airframe. And uh, the most common techniques used with the uh, Razor airframe is uh, a lot easier to get into in the beginning since uh, most of the time you will be flying in straight towards your enemy and shooting them from close range. At the same time, rushing technique is rather advanced once you get into it and once you understand it and it is uh, only uh, there are only a few pilots uh, in the Planet 2 community that actually handles it really well. It's most popular among Reaver pilots. So the two things that you gain from hover stability is stronger air brakes and stronger vertical thrust. And uh, they are both important when it comes to maneuvering and handling your ESF. Now, the stronger air brakes will allow you to get into hover mode faster. That way you can use the vertical thrust and the uh, afterburners in order to gain momentum in any direction depending on uh, how you angle your ESF. So for the third option when it comes to airframe, you have the uh, dogfighting airframe, which gives you uh, faster or stronger jaw movements, meaning that you can turn left and right faster using the A D keys if, you, if you're if playing with the default uh, key bindings. You also get faster roll speed and turning speed, but most pilots get enough speed uh, turning and rolling with uh, the flight uh, sensitivity that you have in game. So uh, uh, the way I see it, there's very little to gain from the dogfighting airframe actually and uh, of course initially it was uh, designed for players that wanted to focus on air to air but mostly the other two airframes are better for that purpose considering how the air to air gameplay works in Planza 2. So now going back to the choice of nose gun, the one main reason why somebody would want to replace their default gun with the, uh, well for the sight, the hailstorm is because the hailstorm does kill faster and it makes it easier to one clip your opponent, especially if you get a good uh, surprise attack on them. However, you do one clip an ESF with the default nose gun of any ESF as well. You just need to maintain your aim on your target for a little bit longer. There's a lot of unhappiness from a lot of pilots due to the nerf to the dedicated air-to-air -air nose gun. And it's mostly about the ammo capacity, but other nerfs has been made as well. Now I use a 800 dpi mouse, or that's what it's set to at the moment. I also have the flight sensitivity either at 0 0.45 or 0 0.50. And since this is the most important and interesting loadout for most players, I want to show you another minute clip here when I'm using it. After that I'll go through the other three. Yeah, they do. Gonna be a biolab farm soon. But then everyone here from Jager's Fist is gonna go there, and then there's gonna be nothing there as well. Fucking VS, I hate them. in the area. Oh, 
they're still around there actually. Oh, fuck. That's where they're coming from, but unfortunately. Oh. That's here. Now the next uh, loadout I want to show you is another air-to-air -air loadout. It's the one where I replace the external afterburner with either the air-to-air lock-on missiles or the coyotes. In this case you see the uh, uh, lock-on missiles. I call this my lame air-to-air -air loadout and uh, that's because I'm not particularly fond of this loadout. Uh, I think it's a little bit too strong for how easy it is to use and some such. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of opinions. Unfortunately for you guys who are interested in this loadout, I don't have any footage to show at this point. Now my next two loadouts are for air to ground. I'm using the Hornet missiles when I'm trying to go for vehicles. And uh, as I made this video, I realized I had quite some certs uh, saved up and I could actually upgrade them a little bit more. So uh, the reload speed is now maxed out. And I also have the thermal vision for them. And the ammo capacity is also fully upgraded. I rarely, if ever, use any of the rocket pods, uh, the original ones, uh, except for when I'm on any of my smurfs and I have them from the beginning of creating that character. Now, when I use the Hornets and I'm going for ground targets such as this uh, Sunderer, I'm trying to avoid uh, incoming fire in uh, a similar way that I do when I'm uh, fighting an enemy ESF. However, it's not nearly as effective. It is a lot easier to hit an ESF uh, from a ground vehicle for as long as you stay within line of sight that is, but it's still better to move a little bit than to uh, hover completely still. Now when you use the Hornets against flashes and harassers, you need to lead quite heavily because the projectile speed of the Hornets are quite slow, so when they are moving, putting your reticle directly on target is not going to make them hit. Normally however, when you use them against tanks, the biggest problem or the biggest challenge is to maneuver and fly in a way so you won't get shot down yourself. However, if they are lagging as much as this one, then hitting it is going to be a challenge in itself. Many times when it comes to air to ground, uh, the way you come in, the way you approach, what angle you fly in towards your enemy is uh, the most uh, important and the most deciding factor whether or not you're going to be successful. And uh, hitting the target is uh, many times the easiest part of it. However, when you find a deployed Sunder like this, it can be really, really hard to hit it. I'm, uh, it's dodging in a crazy way that I can't hit it, instead I'm hitting all these little red dots next to it. And yeah, as much as I'm trying, I'm failing over and over here. A lot of people also prefer to use the flares rather than the uh, fire suppression for air to ground. And uh, I agree to uh, mostly but uh, even though that is the case, I normally fly with the fire suppression anyway, especially if I expect some air-to-air -air as well, because with this loadout I, I still have the Saren laser cannon, and I'm still kind of, uh, I, I still can defend myself against most ESF pilots. I've also been able to save my ESF from flak and the incoming fire from a variety of other weapons, so uh, I still kind of stick with it mostly, but yeah, I, I switch it up. Can you damage the sky guard? Let me know if you damage it and I'll see if I can come in. Watch out, they uh, have a lava eater there. Oh, I'm gonna have to move, I've got a lock on this one. Yeah, okay. Spotted a Republic tower. Two hits in the rear of the sky guard. Yeah, sky guard down. Okay, nice. Uh yeah, when it comes to the air-to-ground rule of ESFs, you want to avoid going toe-to-toe -to -toe against, well, basically anything. Instead, in most situations, you're going to be a lot more successful if you're able to surprise your opponent and hit them from an angle and in a situation where they don't expect you. Now, this is what I consider the most versatile loadout. You are, of course, quite vulnerable to a lot of things without the external afterburners, but... Um, you can attack and you can kill any kind of target with uh, the Hornet missiles, even though the only thing they are actually good at are ground vehicles. Now let me show you a little bit of uh, the usage of the Hornet missiles before we move on.
Echelon, hostile light assault trooper. Hostile light assault trooper spotted. So now the last loadout I want to show you is the anti-infantry loadout and the weapon I'm using for the site is the light PPA. As you can see here I'm actually upgrading it a little bit, something that I felt wasn't all that necessary as I already have the Arexin for this weapon. And the footage that I'm going to show you is with the uh, magazine size at uh, the second level. Now for me getting the last level for a thousand hertz, I think I might just as well, but that is absolutely not necessary for the light PPA. It is much more important, however, if you play TR or NC. The Air Hammer and the Banshee does benefit a lot more from these upgrades. So anyway, it's thermal, it's ammo capacity and magazine size. I prefer the external afterburner fuel tanks in order to get away from incoming fire. Now I still prefer the hover stability airframe, but for pure anti-infantry, at least in this first clip, I'm going to show you how I'm using the flares rather than the fire suppression. What's that sound? Passionate, what are you doing? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, it's stupid, it is. I always think it's passionate when, it, when strange noises uh, like that. Um, no, okay, I'm going sorry, to passionate. the wrong yeah. I'm no, going no, to no, the no, it's okay. No, it's okay, I'm just, uh, I was just wondering what it was. Yeah, but I know it can be annoying, so... No, so. it's not really annoying, it's more like... I've never heard that song before. <laughs> I was drinking my, uh, my water. Oh yeah, mm. Barsak is shining in the dark. That's bad. How the fuck? How are we able to hold off so much territory? Oh yeah, NC and TR are fighting. A lot of bases here. Of course. Now for the next part here, I will be using the fire suppression even though I'm using the light PPA. And everything else is the same. And obviously, if you're flying with fire suppression, one of the biggest problems is lock-ons. However, if you fly with flares, you will have a lot more trouble with weapons such as the walker and of course also flak. You also want to be careful with the, the way you use thermal. Many times uh, dead enemies and uh, turrets from the engineer class can, from some angles and in some situations, look like live enemy infantry players. Now, the moment they start shooting back at you, it is of course important to be able to yeah, break line of sight yeah, from at least the majority of the incoming fire. Now, if there are, like in this case, a biodome yeah, that you can yeah. hide behind or any other parts oh, of the environment, then you might want to check that before you engage your opponents. Because otherwise, once you actually need to take cover, it's going to be too late to start looking for a good place. See you later. See you, man. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful and uh, maybe educational to some degree. So I will say thank you all for watching and bye for now. I just saw uh, a group of two or three guys. I just my EMP, one of those uh, C4 explode boom from the fire for, for them.